so now after understanding the cathode rays uh, uh, and the properties let, let's come back to the next concept that is anode rays or canal rays so basically anode rays or canal rays are positively charged isn't it nothing but your protons this was introduced by goldstein right so what did we learn thomson or uh, we have already studied about thomson e by m ratio now gradually uh, julius plucker also we have studied now we will come to a concept where goldstein has given his assumption about and uh, the pro assumption about the uh, positive recharged protons which are also called as anode rays right or also called as canal rays fine and let us see the construction so goldstein according to goldstein what do you do the same thing it's just like your uh, julius plucker the same discharge tube in this discharge tube he has taken the uh, gas at low pressure the same thing as earlier then he has connected it to the electrodes i'm uh, sorry the, uh, the external circuit not electrodes i'm sorry this is connected to the high voltage to the external circuit then he has taken two electrodes one is the cathode electrode which is negatively charged and the anode electrode which is positively charged now what is the difference between the earlier one discharge tube and this one only difference is here's he here he has taken the cathode uh, this in uh, the electrode as a perforated one perforated one means it has certain holes present in that perforated means some holes so that when he has taken this perforated electrode or cathode electrode what did he observe when he has filled this particular thing with certain amount of gas he has observed certain amount of scintillations which travel into the cathode earlier in cathode rays from cathode to anode they have traveled isn't it cathode to anode we say we call them as cathode rays but here now what did he observe he has observed that cathode rays moves moved in this direction and certain amount of rays they moved towards the cathode through the perforations they have traveled in an opposite direction so now here this is in this direction this is from anode to cathode so the rays which he has observed through the perforations of the holes he has named these rays as positively charged rays or canal rays or anode rays right so let us see the properties so in these properties what what again let us discuss discharge tube gas at low pressure connected to the vacuum pump to maintain the pressure external field electrical field two electrodes one is a cathode one is anode observations are when the gas at low pressure is taken he has observed the rays or the an anode rays started traveling towards in this direction that means they have moved into the perforations of the cathode and they have come out in the uh, and just uh, showed this particular scintillation strike. So this particular with this concept he has given the properties of anode just like your cathode. What are they the first property they are traveling in anode rays travel in straight lines okay this is the same as cathode rays isn't it straight lines then what did he do he is he is also said they contain which type of particles positively charged particles they contain positively charged particles yes after this electrical and magnetic field same like cathode rays because these are positively charged from which direction do they get deflected they get deflected towards a negative electrode isn't it so positive negative and they get attracted so these are positively charged right so they get deflected deflected in electrical field just now I said positive gets deflected towards the negative plate of the electrical field, means uh, the negative uh, terminal. So deflected in electrical and magnetic field. Right. So next important thing, <coughs> as we have said, they contain particles. What are the particles? The positively charged protons. So they contain particles this is also fine next important thing this particular scintillations or that glow or the incandescence and what does it depend it depends upon the nature of the gas that is what is important the incandescence or the scintillations they depend upon depends on okay now because we have learned e by m ratio now i'll write that only instead of scintillations i will write e by m ratio okay depends on depends on the nature of the gas 
nature of the gas this is what is the concept so these are the properties straight line traveling they contain negative positively charged particles because they are positively charged they get deflected next they contain particles that is the two positively charged particles then the e by m ratio of this we have already calculated for cathode rays and it here also this is going to depend upon the nature of the gas the type of gas which you take how much does it ionize so that is what is the e by m ratio now let's come back and look the properties or the characteristics of the charge of proton mass of proton right so let's come back and learn the discovery of neutron so neutron was first discovered by chadwick in 1932 it is right that <coughs> Chadwick in 1932. Fine. How did he discover this? Basically, he has taken beryllium nucleus. Beryllium atomic number is four. Mass number is nine. We write the atomic number at the base and mass number at the top. He has bombarded this beryllium nucleus with alpha particle. What is alpha particle? I think the helium nucleus, helium atomic number two, mass number four. So when he has bombarded both the nucleus, what did he observe? He has observed the formation of carbon nucleus. Okay, carbon. So let us add four plus two, six. So the six atomic number element is carbon. <coughs> six uh, mass number is twelve. What is left out? These two together, six done. 9 plus 4 this is become 13 now but what happened there's a formation of carbon uh, nucleus along with that that surplus of the extra particular thing is a form in the form of neutron this this is how the neutron was uh, discovered fine so how can i define neutron let us write the values and come back and define so neutron when i see the relative charge neutron is neutral in nature so the charge is zero absolute charge also zero when i have to write the mass of neutron it is equal to just like your uh, proton almost closer 1.674 into 10 raised power of minus 27 when i have to write the mass in unified that is unified mass amu it is equal to 1.008 i've written approximate value how can i define neutron neutron is a subatomic particle with no charge and mass almost equal to hydrogen atom we have written the same for electron we have written the same for proton also so let us just, uh, define once again neutron is a subatomic particle found in every atom with no charge and has a mass approximately equal to the mass on the mass equal to the hydrogen atom 